we have with us Shalom Le Kulam. Hello, everyone. Thank you for being with me today. Um, because I cannot see your faces, I would still love to know where you guys are from. So just before we get started, I will introduce myself and then I will be happy if you can write over the chat. Oh, I already see hello from Belgium. Hi, Guillaume. Hi, Petra from Belgium. Germany, so nice, so nice to see you everyone. Santiago Chile from Berlin, that's so nice. Okay, we have Greece, Germany, Guatemala, Austria, Kelsin from Hamburg, we have Inga from Heidelberg. Oh, so many people. Hello, Shalom Nikulam, it's so nice to see you, to see where you're from actually. I can't unfortunately see you, but I hope you can see me. So I will introduce myself while you keep telling me where you are from. I see all your messages. I see Salzburg, I see Zoe from Hamburg. Hello from Estonia to Ruth, Eileen uh, from Dublin, Ireland, and we have Poland, Switzerland, beautiful. Thank you so much for coming. And I will now introduce myself and everyone who didn't say hi already, please feel free to use the chat. Just make sure that when you write a message over the chat box, make sure that you write it to all panelists so we can all see you. So Shalom Le Kulam, I'm so happy to be with you today. My name is Ella, and first of all, I will introduce myself. I will tell you where I come from. Um, I can see that uh, you keep writing. Shalom, Shalom Andrea, <laughs> and uh, Shalom Felix from Germany. And um, so I will tell you for a second what we are going to do today. So my name is Ella. I um, come from Israel. I was born in Israel. I currently live in Berlin where I work as a Hebrew teacher. I speak German. Today, uh, our presentation will be in English, but at the end, there will be a small part where I talk about the connection between German and Hebrew. It's a very interesting connection that we see there. Um, so yeah. Shalom. Shalom is the first word that I chose to start my presentation with. And does anyone know the two meanings that Shalom has? Feel free to write it in the comments. Shalom. What does Shalom mean? Obviously, this is, yeah, peace. I love seeing people writing peace. It's hello. It's both hello and peace. What a wonderful way to start a conversation, right? So Shalom peace, this is the meaning, and of course, this is the greeting, this is how you would start a conversation, um, whether it's a phone call or an official meeting, you would say shalom. So shalom lekulam, na'in me'od, I'm happy to meet you um, and tell you uh, a little bit uh, about the Hebrew language. How do you um, um, get the, 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 the logic behind this language. So the first thing I'm gonna tell you is that in Hebrew, we write from right, we read from right to left. And this is already a major difference. And Hebrew is a semantic language. So like other semantic language, it's very similar to Arabic. You read it from, and you write of course, from right to left. So the three letters that together make shalom are shin, lamed, vav, and mem. Before I tell you more about the Hebrew Aleph Bet, I want to ask you if anyone knows how many letters does the Hebrew Aleph Bet have? Does anyone know? Okay, Dante says 19 almost. Yes, Emmanuel, you got it right. It's 22. Um, Kiara got it right, 22, correct. Yes, David and Magda, yes. Beautiful. The Hebrew alphabet has 22 letters and some of those, those letters have double uses. We will see it in a second. They have, dif um, they have different uh, ways that they function. Um, 22 letters in the alphabet, alphabet, the two Hebrew letters. Before we look at the, the Hebrew Aleph Bet, 
What I want to do is show you the map of Israel. This is a map of Israel that is pretty old. Can anyone guess, guess ben, based on the, the territory, the border, from what year is that? This is obviously a cover illustration of a matchbox. Can anyone guess from what year was it? In what year was it made? Hmm, interesting. Okay. We have 49, someone says 49, 46, 67, mm -hmm. okay. 49, 22, 47. Okay, I think we have a winner. So who said 60, Mar I think it's Marga Mar Margaret maybe? Margaret, um, 67. Basically, what we see here is the borders of Israel before the 67 war. We can see that there is a part near Jerusalem. We can see that the West Bank and the Gaza Strip and also the Golan Heights on the north are not part at all of the Israeli country. Now I'm going to ask you, based on what you see, based on what you know, maybe a few of you have visited in Israel or have friends in Israel, Let's make a, let's play a little game. I want everyone to write at least three names of Israeli cities. And let's see who can write even like three, who can write even more. At least three, yes. Okay, Claudia said a lot. Claudia is right. Nazareth, Gaza, yes, Jerusalem, Tel Aviv, Jerusalem, Tel Aviv, Bethlehem. Mm -hmm. Okay, so a lot of you got a lot Jerusalem and Haifa. Mm -hmm. which are the three big cities that Israel has. And um, the biggest one being Jerusalem. The second largest one is Tel Aviv. And the third one is Haifa. These are the three largest cities in Israel. Right. Let's look at them right here. This is a bit, this is Haifa. This is Tiberias. In Tiberias, we pronounce Tveria. This is Tel Aviv. Jerusalem, we pronounce it Yerushalayim. This is Be'er Sheva, which you already also got right. And this one is Eilat, which is the southern city in Israel. All right. Okay, obviously there are many more. And as I said, this map is from 67. So it's not relevant for today's borders. But this is just for you to kind of get a hang of what this looks like. A lot of people think that Israel has a lot of camels. This is the first thing that comes to their mind. So you can see there's a red camel in the center. There are some camels in the area of Be'er Sheva, but I wouldn't, I wouldn't count on meeting or uh, encountering any um, camels northern than that. Okay. I see a lot of you are writing in some questions. I will try to leave some time for that at the end, but that's great. So keep writing those questions. As I walk us through, let's just do it this way, as I walk us through some of the basics of the Aleph Bet. So obviously what we are doing today is just getting a, a very, very small taste of what a Hebrew class, modern Hebrew class looks like. And when I say modern Hebrew, I mean that what we learn in modern Hebrew class is, of course, the language uh, in which the Bible, the Hebrew Bible is written, but it's more uh, useful, uh, contemporary, updated language. So there are many, many words that Hebrew also took from other languages, and we will review them afterwards. So the first letter that we have is the letter Aleph. Okay, and you can also see that we have two different systems. Okay, the system of writing on the right. Okay, we have this Aleph Bet Gimel Dalet. This is the one that we see in books and magazines, in print, in the media in general. The uh, system on the left is the cursive Aleph Bet, and the cursive Aleph Bet makes it much, much faster. It allows us to write much more quickly. And so today, when you learn Hebrew, you learn both sets to read in the dfus. It's called dfus, this letters, these letters. And to write, we write in uh, the ktav. It's called ktav. Okay, so we have Aleph. And we also have another interesting system of sounds. And this is 
the system that is called Nikud. And when we have those signs under or above certain letters, this is what helps us determine what sound will the letter make. So Aleph as a standalone can make E, can make A, can make E, but does anyone know what happens once we have this underneath the Aleph? What sound will it make? Can you try and write it in English? Okay, Emmanuel, you got it right. Ah, yes. And also Zoe, I think. And Jonathan, yes. Yes, great guys. Exactly. So when we have the, these, these two are called Kamats and Patach. These are two of the signs of the Nikud that help us determine how to pronounce a certain letter in the alphabet. Great. So we have an A, ah, already a nice beginning. Okay, the next letter that we have, and shortly you will see that just by learning the five first letters of the alphabet, we can already make a lot of words. So the first, the second letter is the letter bet. And here you see an interesting thing, because as you remember, we said that the Hebrew language has 22 letters. But bet, the second letter, is a very interesting example, because bet can function both as B and V. It all depends on whether or not it has this dot in its belly. When it has the dot in its belly, it's a stronger one. You pronounce it from the area of the lips. When it doesn't have the dot in its belly, it's a softer version. It's V. All right. So we have B and we have VET. This is how we pronounce VET without the dot in the middle. Okay, get ready because I'm going to ask you a question. Can anyone try and tell me? Wait, before I continue, for the sake of our uh, class today, we are going to assume that all the sounds that we are learning have this kamatz patah. So we are only focusing on a ah sounds today. So can anyone tell me what's written here? How do you pronounce it? And maybe, okay, yes. Yes, oh my God, this is too easy for you. Yes, Amanda, Tavid, yes. Danny, father, yes. Friedrich, Abba, mm -hmm. great job. Abba, which means father, Claudia, great job. So Abba means father or dad, exactly. So we can already see an interesting thing here. What is the difference between, yes, Papa, Jonathan, that is correct. What is the difference between the first Aleph and the last Aleph? Hmm, can anyone tell me what is the difference between Aleph at the beginning, right? Because we read from right to left and the Aleph at the end. Does anyone know? Ha, huh. okay, I'm gonna tell you. So Aleph, the first has a sound, Emmanuel. Correct, the last is silent. Nahon, toda, thank you, Emmanuel. So exactly. So Aleph is one of the five letters of the Aleph bet that functions both as a consonant and a vowel. So at the beginning of the word Abba, we pronounce it A. Ah, so we can really hear it and that makes it a consonant. When we have the Aleph at the end, it's silent, right? Just like the A, the letter A in the ABC. So Abba, the first A is a consonant, the last one is quiet, okay? Abba, exactly. Great. Okay, Abba, father, and it has two syllables. This would be the first, sorry, this would be the first syllable, ah, and then this would be a second syllable, Abba, two syllables. Great, let's move on. This is the third letter of the Aleph Bet. Can anyone tell me, can anyone write, how would you pronounce it in English? This is a G, hard G, Nahon, correct. Mm -hmm. So how would that sound? G like go, correct. But what is written here? How would that sound in English? Yes, that's again, Espanol, Cecilia, Nahon. So this would be pronounced gag. We have this one, 
This is the first gimel makes a ga. Yes, Jonathan, gag, gag. This is a ga. The second one is g. It's a silent g, and together it makes a gag. Does anyone know what gag means in Hebrew? Does anyone have any idea? It's a very important word, especially when it's raining. All right, I'm gonna tell you. Gag in Hebrew means rooftop. All right, very important word. So we have gag and you can already see that we were able to write Abba, we already can write gag and let's continue. The fourth letter of the Aleph Bet is the letter Dalet. Dalet makes the sound of D, Dag, Zoe, correct. Do you know what Dag is? What is Dag? This is something that you eat. You eat a lot of it on Jewish holidays. <laughs> it's also day in Dutch, correct, <laughs> Matteo? Um, Dag means, yes. Someone wrote fish, Alex, and another one, I couldn't tell the name. Yes, fish. Dog means fish. Yes, exactly. It has one syllable, dog. This is how you would pronounce it. Great, so now you can also say fish in Hebrew. You can say fish, you can say rooftop, and you can say Abba, dead. All right. Good job. Okay, I'm teaching you now a very, very important word in all languages, and it's a very beautiful word in Hebrew. We are now looking at the fifth letter of the Aleph Bet, and this is the last one that we are learning today. So can anyone tell me, oh, Dante, you are fast. Emmanuel, good job. Yes. Ahava, Jenny, correct. Exactly. So this is the letter Hey. Hey makes the sound of ha 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 like hi and hey also functions both as a consonant and as a um as a vowel so you can see that here we have a ah. this would make wait a minute this would make an a ah. ha and the vet together with the hey the silent hey at the end makes va so together we have ahava, love. How many syllables do we have in ahava? Nechon, great. So Nechon, good job anyone, everyone. Yes, three, three syllables. We have the first one, a, the second one, ha, and va, ahava, metsuyan. So, ahava, again, we can hear how here this hey makes the sound of ha, we hear it, whereas at the end of the word, it's silent. And those letters are very, very crucial in the Hebrew language. We have aleph, which we learned, we have hey, we also have vav, which we're not going to look at today but you can see it in many, many Hebrew words. And we have this one, Yud. All right, Danny asks a very good question. Is there no point inside the Va? So there is no point inside the vet here. And the reason is that we don't say Ahaba. If this would have been pronounced as Ahaba, we would have to put a dot inside the bet. But since the word is pronounced ahava, we are using, I'm getting back to the very beginning, we are using this bet. All right, Danny, I hope it answered your question. So this would make it ahava and not ahaba, like abba. Now, as far as Nikud goes, it's very interesting because today we have only been focusing on this one. So I didn't even bother using it with the words that we learned. In a full Hebrew class, once you really get down to business and you kind of break the language down in terms of familiarizing yourselves with all the Aleph Bet and the Nikud systems, we have other signs as well for E, for E, for U, for O. But today, again, for the sake of this class, we are assuming that all the 
otiot letters have the sound of a. Aba, gag, dag, ahava. Okay. Um, right. I want to, just before we finish off, and maybe we can leave some time for questions if you have any, focus on a few of the words that found their way into the Hebrew language, despite the fact that they don't come from Hebrew at all. I'm going to just share my screen this way. Okay, so this word in Hebrew is pronounced spitz. For all of you German speakers out there, what is a spitz? or spitze. Who can tell us? Yes. Tip, a sharp object, point, top, peak also, correct, Laura? Top, point, yes, exactly. All right, so this is a very interesting case. Hebrew has imported a lot of, um, a lot of words from the German language. The reason for that is that some of the most important educational establishments in Palestine before it became the state of Israel were founded by German Jews with the support of German Jews by German Jews and the German language was still very very important in Palestine. In fact there was a real battle whether the teaching, um, the educational system in Palestine, we're talking about the beginning of the 20th century, Israel was founded in 48, okay, 1948. We're talking about a few decades before that. You could already see new schools like Hare Ali and universities starting to develop as Hebrew universities. And there was a real clash between the German culture and the German language and the Hebrew language. And at the end, the Hebrew language won. They really taught in Hebrew in those places. In 1908 or 1909, you could already immigrate to Israel and be a student in a Hebrew university. But there were many, many words that, there were, that were missing in the Hebrew language because it was a dead language for many, many, many years. And that's how a lot of words from German and also Yiddish, which is a love child of Hebrew and German, found their way into Hebrew. So the word spitz in Hebrew is used as when we want to say that something is like, um, when we want to say that there is a tip of something, a sharp point. Um, and we can also say, use it as a slang. If I want to tell you guys about someone who is very sharp, very successful, who spitz? He's a spitz. So this is kind of like a, a, a funny way that um, Hebrew incorporated this word into the slang uh, modern language. Schmalz is another one. Schmalz in German. What does schmalz mean? What a, schmelzen? German guys, melt. Nachon Petra. Yes, David and fat also. Nachon. Exactly. So when Hebrew, uh, in the Hebrew language, when we say schmaltz, we mean it in a sense of kitsch. Hasere, the movie, Hayayo Termidai Schmaltz. It was too kitschy for me. All right? So this is another example. I think there's another one right here. Yes, this one is called schluck. And schluck is, what is schluck, Germans? Schlucken? Swallow, it's to take a sip. Nachon me'od, gulp, thank you, great, exactly. So in Hebrew, again, lakachat schluck is to take a, a, a sip of water. Lakachat schluck, and uh, it's a legitimate Hebrew word, but obviously this is coming from German, like many, many other words that we, some of them cover today, many of them we don't really have time. The last one I'm going to leave you with is the word Zimmer. Zimmer. This is how it's pronounced in Hebrew. And obviously this means it directly translates Nachon, Chana, Nachon, Atyom, Nachon, Rum, Jonathan, Petra, correct. All of you guys are correct. Exactly. So, in Hebrew, it has an interesting twist because we don't use tzimel in a direct translation just as a room. We say tzimel about a small cabin, maybe in the Golan Heights, maybe somewhere else in nature that we can take a vacation in. So kind of like the word dacha, if you know it, 
like a summer house. This is what atzimel in Hebrew means. But of course, it translates directly to tzimel from German, which means room. Dacha in Russian, exactly, Mia, correct. Yes. The last one, yes, now it's really the last one. The last one doesn't come from German, I believe it comes from English and it's pronounced exactly like you see it in English. So shock, yes, a state of shock. Shock is something that you say in Hebrew um, if you want to be dramatic. So for example, I can be very dramatic right now and say, Ani beshok I'm shocked that our class is almost over, right? So this is shock, exactly. It's also a verb exactly in German and I'm sure in other languages as well. And the last thing I want to tell you about this presentation is all the fonts that you've seen today. Uh, this font is called Noam Text, and this is a font. It's a system of letters of, and signs that functions both in Hebrew and in foreign languages uh, like German and English. And you can see that it's really made for web, and it's also made for the purpose of integrating Hebrew with um, uh, English with German, and it's been developed by uh, Adi Stern, which is also, he's also the uh, professor and in, 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 uh, in head of design um, in uh, Bezalel Academy for Art and Design in Jerusalem. Right. In the last three minutes that we have together, I want to tell you a little bit about where I teach. I teach in a lovely school for languages, which is called Sprachsalon. Sprachsalon is located in Neukölln, which is a lovely neighborhood in Berlin. And Sprachsalon offers online courses and you can feel free to contact them, contact as, us in case you're interested in an online Hebrew class. Um, since the pandemic started, um, we have started to offer online classes. So now we don't only have students from Berlin, not even just from Germany, but really this is an option that is open for everyone. And we are more than happy to offer you to join us and to learn Hebrew together. It's a fascinating language. And judging by your questions, it definitely sounds like some of you might enjoy deepening your understanding of this language and start speaking it and reading it. So thank you so much everyone for your participation. I am wishing you a great week. Shavua Metsuyan. Toda Shebatem. And feel free to get in touch if you are interested. Toda Raba Shalom, toda Lara, toda Ruth, <laughs> toda Constance, toda le kulam. <laughs>